Um, my name is Lexi Jong, and here I like to talk about luxury makeup. Today we are going to be talking about Lisa Eldridge and her latest launch. And I'm going to start off by saying that this launch was pretty disappointing for me. And it's taken me a while to put this video up for a couple of reasons. I wanted to be sure that I thoroughly tested everything, uh, you know, several times to make sure that you know, my opinions were solid and what I was seeing was, was accurate. So, um, you know, I actually ended up placing two orders. I placed every, an order for everything except for the, uh, two deepest highlighters first. So that was the four glosses, two of the highlighters, the five lipsticks and the six blushes. I have pretty much everything that Lisa Eldridge has ever released, you know, aside from like some of the lip pen lip pencils because, you know, they were sold in kits and I didn't want to have that many duplicates. But, uh, you know, I have pretty much everything. So I was super excited for this launch and I was sure that I was going to love everything. And I have to say, I did have very high expectations. Everything looked gorgeous in her demo and so forth. So anyway, I placed that first order. And then later in the day, I decided I wanted to try the two deepest highlighters as eyeshadow. So I ordered, I placed a second order for those and another sweatshirt. So those are my two orders. The first things that were delivered, um, you know, once the release date came, I got my two deepest highlighters and my sweatshirt first. They came fairly quickly. And then, um, you know, a little while after that, I got part of my order with the blushes and the lipsticks. So I got um, about half of it. Uh, maybe it, actually it was a little bit more than half. So I got all four of the glosses and four of the lipsticks and uh, half the blushes. So yeah, I definitely got more than half. Um, and then, you know, I didn't know what was going on with my other, the, the rest of my items. So I contacted them as always, fantastic uh, customer service response. They emailed me back like within minutes and told me they would send out the rest of my order. They weren't sure what happened and why I was missing those items. So they sent me like a confirmation and a tracking number, but it actually wasn't packed by the warehouse until I contacted them again, like seven or eight days later, I emailed them again. I was like, what's going on with my order? It still, you know, hasn't moved from the warehouse. So then they shipped it out. And I think they must've shipped it next day because I got it like within one or two days after that. You know, it was, it was a Friday and I got it like that Monday. So uh, yes, so I got the rest of my order and then I've been playing with it since. So let's talk about that. First, I would like to say that Lisa Eldridge's customer service team has always been phenomenal. There were apparently like a communication issues or stock issues or something with the US warehouse. And that was the issue with getting the rest of my order. But their response is always very fast. So, you know, definitely no issues with customer service or anything like that. But, um, you know, I was very disappointed with the actual products that I received. So I do have all of the glosses that she has released before. These four new glosses are gorgeous. I really like the glosses, no issues with the glosses whatsoever. The five lipsticks, however, you know, as we talk about this, I'm gonna show you some swatches of the glosses and the uh, lipsticks. So let's talk about those. So back to the glosses for a second, there were four new shades released. And Songbird and Affair are the two most neutral glosses. And Affair and Songbird both do not have any shimmer in them. Okay, so they're like a pure like cream gloss. And then the other two shades, we have Charm and Delilah. Charm has a little bit of shimmer and so does Delilah. I don't know if it's related to the color or not, but my Delilah is a little bit more sparkly than charm but it could just be because it's a more vibrant shade the sparkle it you know shows up a bit better so those two both have shimmer in them again the glosses i think are really nice uh the texture is comfortable on the lips and if you are familiar with her glosses from before i feel that the formula is the same one thing to know about the glosses is the applicators are you know, they're a little bit on the larger side, so a lot of product comes up with it. So what I 
like to do usually is wipe off that applicator a little bit before applying it to my lips or it can be a little bit of a goopy mess you know you get too much product on it's hard to spread out so i do recommend you know wiping off uh, some of the product from the applicator as you are taking it out of the container now as for the lipsticks now this line the luxuriously lucent lipsticks these are different from the velvets she did release two shades in this line previously so that was go lightly which unfortunately that's the only lipstick i don't have of hers and then love of my life so in preparation for this launch i wore love of my life quite a bit i was pretty i'm happy with that formula you know it's a sheer formula that is buildable but you know it's very comfortable on the lips and the stain from that color really, you know, sticks around for quite a while. Whereas these newer ones that I picked up, and I have to say that I think it's batch consistency issues. This is not gonna be true for everybody because I do know people who have these and love them and theirs are not quite the same as mine. My issue is that my lipsticks are a little bit oilier than the love of my life that I have. So you know how, like it's it's like a, a lip oil combined in there, but you know how the Chanel Rouge Coco Flash has more of that lip oil texture to it? These do as well, but they, uh, you know, it doesn't feel quite as, well, it's not as oily as that. And unfortunately, I don't know if it was intentional. Uh, it doesn't match with the texture of my previous Love of My Life lipstick. And these four new shades, as you can see during these swatches, they don't all go on very evenly. Uh, you know, they do settle into lines and, you know, they just don't look that even. And as you're building up the texture, notice how it performs on the lip lines. Because of that oilier texture, this is one that does bleed and transfer quite a bit. Now, aside from that issue, the pigmentation on these, I like the fact that it's sheer. I like the fact that it's buildable. So those are definitely qualities that I love in a lipstick, especially during the summertime. I find them very comfortable. I reach for those a lot. However, with these five shades, they are inconsistent for me as well. So when I put these lipsticks on, most of the time I only have color remaining on my lips for one to two hours. Whereas there are a couple of shades that will kind of hang around on my lips more. So Rose Official, that one will leave a stain on my lips. That one will, you know, last for a while. That looks really nice. And then the other one that does that is Painterly. The other three, however, they disappear on my lips within two hours. I don't have any pigmentation remaining as a stain. It's kind of like they are such an oily product that the color is going away with them. So I'm not sure. I, I feel like it's probably a batch consistency issue because again, they don't seem to quite match with the love of my life or you know how the, the others perform. And I do have to say that as I am applying these, not all five of these lipsticks feel exactly the same. My Rose Official in particular definitely feels to be a drier formula, more consistent with the love of my life that I have. So that's why I think it's probably related to batch issues and not necessarily related to all of the lipsticks in the line because I'm pretty sure the formula is supposed to be consistent after hearing everything that Lisa Eldridge has stated. Now let's go ahead and do some arm swatches of all of these products. We're gonna start off with the lip glosses. So we're gonna start, actually I was gonna, let's start with the more neutral ones first. So we're gonna start off with Songbird here. And I'm gonna put the glosses on my hand, the lipsticks on my arm. So here is Songbird. I'm gonna build this up on one end a little bit. So here's Songbird, you can see that it is a peachy shade. There's a little bit of pink in here, so it's not like overly warm. So it's going to be more of a peach with a touch of pink. And then we have a fair, and a fair is a shade that is in the velvet lipsticks. And it's, I think, one of the most popular shades. So you can see that this was going to be like a neutral, more brownish shade. I think it's really pretty. You do see that you've got warm peachy tones in here as well. And so those two do not have any shimmer. 
Next up, we have Charm, and this is gonna be more like a bubblegum pink. So this one does have shimmer. You can see that it's gonna be a bright, cool tone bubblegum pink. It's kind of like a carnation pink Crayola crayon, in my opinion. And then we have Delilah, which also has shimmer. Okay, so here's Delilah, and this is gonna be a bright, orchid pinky purple kind of shade it's got a lot of shimmer in there and if you look at my hand you can see what i mean when i say delilah appears to have more shimmer they probably both have the same amount but because of the contrast in the shimmer and the gloss it's more evident in delilah now as for the lipsticks we have dance card here which is going to be a peachy shade and I believe this is supposed to be a slightly pinker version than the Go Lightly lipstick. And again, I don't have Go Lightly to compare. I have the Go Lightly gloss, which is indeed a bit peachier than this. So just for comparison, here is the Go Lightly lip gloss. So you can see that it is going to be a little bit more of a, a brighter peachy shade. And then we have Rose Official. This was the shade I was most excited about, and I have to say it is my favorite out of these. You can see that it is a beautiful tea rose. This one here is Spirited Away, and this one is another gorgeous shade. It's more of a brownish nude with a touch of rose in it. And then painterly, a lot of times looks very much like it, but you can see that it's going to be deeper, browner. It's actually a little bit cooler in tone. You can see this one has, instead of having more of like a rose tone in it, this one has more of a mauve or mauve tone to it, um, but it's more of a brown shade. And then this one here is Atomic Cherry. This is another one that I really love the color of this. It's a sheer red and it's more of like a peachy red, um, it definitely doesn't get, you know, as vibrant as it looks in the tube exactly, but I really love the color. Unfortunately, it doesn't last super well on my lips, but I still really appreciate the color a lot. Uh, I think it is a great starter red for anybody who's afraid to wear reds. And it's also just like a great shade um, in general for like summertime if you're looking for a soft tint. And I really like that color. So I was editing and I realized I forgot to swatch Kit Mischief. So here is Kit Mischief and let me just go ahead and add the other shades real quickly again. Dance Card, Rose Official, Spirited Away. I'm gonna put Kit Mischief here as well so you can kind of compare it because does have some similarities to Spirited Away and Painterly. So here's Painterly. I guess maybe it's a little bit more similar to um, Dance Card there. Kid Mischief and Dance Card, Kid Mischief and Dance Card. And this last one here is Atomic Cherry. So one last time we have Kit Mischief, Dance Card, Rose Official, Spirited Away, Kit Mischief, painterly and atomic cherry now let's take a look at the highlighters so the highlighters here again i picked up all four they have a massive massive applicator this applicator is too big for me <laughs> so um i definitely have to wipe this off so here is cosmic rose this one here is Crystal Nebula. You can see that Crystal Nebula does seem to be a little bit more, um, you know, luminizing than Cosmic Rose. Cosmic Rose, I actually find it to be very warm tone. It's really more of a beige shade in my opinion, but it does have a touch of pink compared to Crystal Nebula, which is definitely more golden in tone. This one here is Solar Light. And again, this one is gonna be kind of like a tan golden shade. You can see a little bit of peach in this one. And then the deepest shade here is Celestial Fire. Okay, and I can technically use that as a glowy bronzer. 
It's just not really my style, but it can be done. Um, and one more time, we have Cosmic Rose, Crystal Nebula, Solar Light, and Celestial Fire. And now moving on to the biggest part of the launch, we have the six blushes. And you know, these were the most disappointing product to me. Before I actually go into these and swatch these, let me show you a get ready with me so you can see how everything applies. You can see the performance and so forth. And I think that might be helpful. And then we'll go ahead and I will swatch these and we'll talk about my thoughts on it. Right, so I wanted to pull back my hair, but I guess my daughter took my breath. She was playing with them earlier. So we're going to do what we can. And I have found that my favorite way to apply the highlighter is underneath foundation. That's one of the things that Lisa Eldridge actually recommends with this as well. So this is the Seamless Skin Elevated Glow Highlight. And I picked up all four shades, um, you know, not because I planned on using all four as a highlighter, but because the darkest shades I actually planned on using as eyeshadow. So that was the purpose for me picking those up. So I had very little bit on the brush. And that's because, I mean, look at the applicator. You can see it's really large. A lot comes out. So I, I wipe it and just use kind of what's still there to get that because this is a lot of product. Now to put this in, you can pat it in and just kind of apply that with a finger. And then you can see that glow there. You can also use a brush. This is, uh, I believe this is the base. Yeah, the mini base brush from Sonia G. So there you go. And you can see that it is very glowy, a very luminescent glow. I like this highlighter. Um, there is a special polymer in here that is supposed to, you know, have some skincare benefits. We'll talk about that later, but this is what it looks like. It works on top of foundation and it works underneath. I personally like to use it underneath because I like to kind of tone that down a little bit. So let's go ahead. I'm going to add a mix of the Clay de Poe Radiant Fluid Matte and Radiant Fluid Natural Foundations in I-10. And I'll see you in a second. Okay, so here it is with the foundation on. You can still see the highlight underneath. And yeah, I think it's definitely plenty of bling for me. If I wanted to intensify it, I could add a little bit more. You can use this a little bit under your eyes. It's actually not recommended. Lisa Eldridge did not recommend using it under her eyes. I don't remember why, maybe because it is so shiny. But um, yeah, you can do that. I have tried that. Uh, when I done that though, I mix like a tiny bit in with my concealer or I use the brush that I used with a highlight with the concealer, which is what I did today. And you don't really see much of the highlight then, but you do get a little bit more brightening than you would otherwise. Okay. So these are the six blushes. I'm not sure if you can really see when the light actually hits this kind of brightly, you might be able to see, I actually have product all the way past the numbers up here in this crimped area. So I do feel like this blush is going to squirt out the back end. So for those of you who haven't seen that happen yet, there are a bunch of people who've posted it on Instagram. Just Glow Firefly has a video. She was doing a get ready with me and this just exploded on her while she was using it. So actually I have a lot of the blushes are like this. This one, you know, it's, it's close to uh, that happening. So we're not gonna use that today, but I will try to get a little bit out to swatch. I'm gonna use one that um, that is not happening with. So I have used these blushes in different, like get ready with me's, different photos on Instagram and so forth. So if you wanna see what they look like on my cheeks, unfortunately, I'm not gonna be doing cheek swatches of all of these because I am afraid that they are not gonna make it through. So packaging here, you have you know a plastic tube here. These are 15 milliliters or 0.5 ounces. They have a two year shelf life. They're made in Italy. And this cap screws off. This can actually extend, which some people have said that that you know kind of helps get the product out. 
For me, this shade here is Island Glow. I'm gonna squeeze it out and look, you can see how like dry this is. It's like kind of dry and chalky. Unfortunately, I have different consistencies for all of these blushes. So with some of them, the more liquidy ones, I like to apply it just with a finger and kind of tap it in. But when they are this like drier consistency, um, I actually like to tap it on and then use a brush. So I'm going to go back in. I'm just wiping off the mini base and I'm going to use that. And we'll see. Sometimes with the drier ones, I can't get a smooth blend and other times I can. This smoothed out okay on my hand. So I think it should be okay on my face. So I love this color. I think it's very pretty. Definitely has that natural look to it. And I think it's a really nice shade. So this is the Coral Island Glow. Now with what's on here, I'm going to dip the mini base in and we'll apply it directly with the brush on this side. So you can see both applications. And you can see that this looks a little bit more natural where I start with the finger versus this. I feel like, you know, it's a little bit heavier in spots, which is why I prefer this side. So if a side is a little bit heavier than the other, I just like to take my foundation brush and just kind of go over that a little bit. And I think that looks much more similar on both sides. Just have kind of that flushed look to it. And there we go. So that's Island Glow. And again, I could add more highlight if I wanted to, but I think that's pretty good. I'm just gonna add, I'm just gonna add like the Venus touch more here. And one of the other things I do with this product a lot of times, I will just straight ahead use my foundation brush to kind of blend it in. And that works beautifully. I'm going to add some eyeshadow right now and then I'll be back and we'll talk about lips. And then let's go in with some highlighter. So this is the deepest one. This is Celestial Fire. So I'm going to put a little bit of this on the back of my hand here. And I wiped off the T7. I'm just going to get a little bit of that on the brush here. And I'm going to apply this to the lid. Just kind of going on top here. So there's that. Okay, let me show you on the other eye so you can really see the performance. This time more tapping, less sweeping. Although it might look like I'm sweeping, I'm actually just little taps. And the reason I wanted to distinguish that is you can see that here where I used little um, swiping motions, it did move the shadow, whereas on this eye it didn't. That's what the highlighter looks topped over eyeshadow. And we'll talk about this more when we get to my thoughts. And just an update here, it has now been nine minutes since I applied the highlighter on top of the eyeshadow. And you can see how it has creased already. So you can just kind of tap it out. Um, but I have to say that tapping it out actually works better without the powder eyeshadow base personally. And I have done this with and without primers before. And we'll talk about that in my thoughts. Okay, so one of the reasons that I'm not going to be doing cheek swatches and so forth is, I'm not sure if you can see it, but when you have like bright light hitting the crimped area, you can actually see product going all the way. Mine actually goes past the number on here. So this, this little code number, I have product going all the way, almost to the top. So I am afraid that this is going to explode. For those of you who aren't on Instagram or haven't seen this, you know, some of these blushes have been releasing product through the back end because of, 
you know, I guess too much pressure, um, you know, trying to get the product out. So if you haven't seen it yet, Just Glow Firefly, she was doing a get ready with me and hers exploded on camera. You can see it like shoot past her and, you know, it made a huge mess. So that that is an issue. Now her customer service has been great with dealing with that. So if you've had an issue, definitely contact them. But because I am afraid that that's going to happen, I'm not going to go ahead and do cheek swatches, but I will, you know, try to get a little bit of color out of each of these tubes so you can see the colors here. And we're going to do that on my hand. I cleaned everything off. But unfortunately, this issue is with several of mine. So, um, you know, this one here, I'm not sure if you can see, this is pink soap. This is one of the ones that just arrived this week. And I have it just starting to go into the crimp. It's not that bad yet, but I've only squirted it out one time so far. So let's see. Now these have a, the consistency of these is different for each shade. So you can see that this one comes out kind of like a thick cream. It's a little bit on the dry side. So here's the full swatch. We'll do a light swatch here. I know I still have my arm is stained so you can see kind of what it blends out to be. This is pink soap. And here's the swatch. So when you actually touch it, you know, it's, it's creamy. It's not that dry feeling, but it is a thicker consistency that, than I expected. So that one's pink soap. Pink Poetry is the one I have to be really careful with, so I'm gonna kind of hold my back end while I try to get some of this out here. And this one is really hard to get product out. You can see how hard I'm squeezing this. You can see like my knuckles and so forth. So I'm actually not gonna be able to get more than this out. It's seriously about to come through the back here. So, <laughs> Um, but you can see that this one, again, is going to have that thicker consistency. And this is Pink Poetry. I absolutely love this color on my skin. I did wear it once. I think it is a gorgeous shade. And it's just a shame that um, packaging is an issue with this. So that's Pink Poetry and Pink Soap. Pink Soap, you can see, is going to be much more of you know, one of those like neutral everyday shades kind of reminds me a little bit more of um, some of those shades from Chanel, like the Jersey or the Rose Ekren, um, just with how neutral they are. And then this one here is Island Glow that I used today in the Get Ready With Me. And again, you saw that one come out. It's hard to get it out. I mean, there's not much else to say about it. And here's Island Glow blended out. I love this shade. I think the colors in this collection are great and the way they sheer out is great. And I don't even mind having this thicker consistency per se, you know, smearing it out and so forth. That's not a deal breaker to me. It's more so how hard it is to get it out of the packaging and the ramifications of having to apply that much pressure. Now, this one here is Dante's Dream. And I have to say, when I first got this, this was one that was an oily mess. So the first few times I squirted this out, it was just like all oil coming through. And then now I've got color. You can see that this one is gonna be a little bit creamier. It's a slightly thinner texture than the others here. Okay, so this is Dante's Dream. So Dante's Dream here, you can see, is going to be a deeper shade. It's got some brown and some red kind of in there. I think it's a really beautiful, like a deep rosewood. And then this one here is Venetian Red. I really love this one too, but See this, you can see right here in the cap, all the oil. I have squirted this out several times before. I'm just gonna squirt some of this oil onto my cloth here to kind of get rid of some of that um, before we go ahead and put it on here. Because the oily texture, I mean, look at that. I have, you know, one of the recommendations they have is to kind of massage or knead your tube 
to get the product, you know, redistributed, but I've done that so many times. It has not worked. This is Venetian Red. It's actually one of my favorite shades on here. You can see though with the oilier, thinner texture on here um, that it's, well, it's definitely very easy to shear out, but it just, it doesn't go on quite the same way. So this is the Venetian Red, which is more of like a plum red shade. So I think the oily texture on that actually does help it shear out very easily, but it's just another inconsistency. And then Mountain Walk here, I'm just gonna try to be careful with this one. Okay, so here's Mountain Walk. And this one, shocking, but it's so beautiful sheared out. And this is Mountain Walk. Okay, so here they are sheared out. We have Pink Soap, Pink Poetry, Island Glow, Dante's Dream, Venetian Red, and Mountain Walk. And here they are, Full Strength, Pink Soap, Pink Poetry, Island Glow, Dante's Dream, Venetian Red, and Mountain Walk. So let's discuss my thoughts, okay? I've kind of been going over my thoughts throughout this whole video, so uh, hopefully you kind of already know, but I am disappointed with this launch. I mean, I had high hopes because I've loved everything from Lisa Eldridge so far, and I have to say she's like my favorite makeup artist, so I am very, very sad to say that I am not happy with this launch. The highlighters I think are nice. And I have to say that if you are looking for a highlighter that gives you that glow, that luminosity without accentuating lines or wrinkles in your face, this does that. This does not gather into lines. It stays beautifully on the skin. Um, you know, if I wear it on top, I do feel like mine doesn't set down 100% if I pile it on. If you're just using a little bit sparingly, no issues. When I use it on the eyes, I don't really like it on the eyes. You know, it, it looks fine, but it creases pretty quickly. And I've actually found that it performs the best on the eyes if I don't use any base products. So no primer, no powder or shadow or anything. During the Get Ready With Me, you saw the highlighter over the powder shadow. And I took that off after the update on that because, you know, even my eyeliner, you know, just didn't hold up with that. <laughs> Those were, that was the new Chanel eyeliner, the new CeeLo Yo Waterproof, which I have on now minus the highlighter. But even that kind of, it's like it can't, it doesn't come in contact with the skin. So it sits on the highlight and the highlighter, when you have that much product on at once, it doesn't really um, truly set down, at least on me. So on my lids, it doesn't set down. Even if you just kind of pat on a little bit, you still end up with some creasing. So it's just, it's not my favorite place to put it, but again, that's not where it's recommended. So that that is not an issue. It's just a note there. Um, on the skin, I think it performs beautifully. It is my favorite item from this launch and I I do like it. Um, so I, I would definitely say that the highlighter is a nice product. I think the applicator is a little large for me, but I, I don't have any issues with it. I like the glass bottle of it. Out of the shades, the Cosmic Rose, I thought I was gonna like more, but it's actually warmer in tone than I expected. And yeah, so my favorite is the Crystal Nebula, which is the one that Lisa Eldridge herself puts on in like every video <laughs> or uh, every tutorial. So that one is my favorite. I think, you know, that's the one I have on today. I think it looks very natural underneath foundation. And the Cosmic Rose, you don't notice it as much. So if you're looking for something more subtle than this, the Cosmic Rose is a good option if you're fair skinned. And the other two, you know, I do like the colors, you know, and I can use Celestial Fire as a bronzer. It's just, it's uh, not the type of tone I go for with bronzers. I'm not a huge bronzer person. And so when I do use one, I prefer something cooler in tone, but it does work that way. And it actually can have a very beautiful effect. So if you've got warmer skin tone than mine, 
then I think that could be a nice option. Uh, especially seeing how well it works with um, my foundations and so forth. If you put it on underneath, I think you can get a super natural kind of bronzy look with that. I think it's really pretty. So the highlighters, no issues with those. The lip glosses, I also like the lip glosses. Okay, so they are nice. Their texture is more of a um, gloss oil hybrid that has been so popular recently, but these are a little bit thicker. They remind me a bit of the Sisley Lafito glosses, which, you know, those are like my favorite lip glosses. So texturally, they are similar to that. I, I do have to remember to kind of wipe off the wand because it's a little bit large for, for my lips to get a thin, even layer first. Um, but I like the colors, no issues with those. They are sheer. So, I mean, you saw during the demo, they are sheer, like a traditional lip gloss. So just keep that in mind. Sometimes when you see something this bright, you think that's what your lips gonna look like. It's not going to, it's just a hint of that color. And these work very nicely on top of things as well. So right now I actually have um, a mix of the glosses on in, uh, well, I have the Givenchy lip pencil on in number eight, Parma Silhouette. So I have that all over my lips. And then I have a mix of Songbird and Delilah. So I have Songbird all over and then just the slightest touch of Delilah on top just for a little bit of that shimmer. So that's why I have on my lips now and I think the lip glosses actually hold up really well. You know, they have traditional wear time for a gloss but bleeding and stuff doesn't really happen with the glosses. I actually have more bleeding and feathering with these lipsticks. And as I mentioned during the lip swatches, these lipsticks, I am disappointed because they don't match the texture of my original Love of My Life, which the Rose Official one does perform better than that, but it still feels a bit oilier than the Love of My Life. Um, I kind of gave all of my thoughts on these during the lip swatches, but I am disappointed that they don't quite match up to what I was expecting. I do like the shades that she has included in this collection. And I don't think they're necessarily a bad purchase. It's just go into them knowing what you're getting. Honestly, you know, I, I don't think they do build up. You get color built up. But I think the more you build it, the less even the application appears and the more opportunity you have for feathering and bleeding of the products. So if you are going to get these and wear them, I would recommend using them more surely and I would definitely pair them with a lip pencil, a lip liner. So um, those are my thoughts on the lipsticks. Again, I, I'm unfortunately disappointed with those. And then the blushes, as I've mentioned, I am disappointed with these because they are inconsistent with the products. This one here is my Venetian Red, which is, as you saw, very watery and oily. But even then, you know, I don't have to squeeze that hard to get the product out, but even then I have products seeping. I'm right now like at these, I'm sorry, at the numbers here, it's seeping into the crimped area. And that's just something that shouldn't happen. So I'm not sure what happened. Maybe they didn't have enough intense heat when they melted this and it's not fully sealed. Uh, I don't know, because this one, I don't have to apply a lot of pressure to. With the other ones, like Pink Poetry, I could see it maybe pushing into here because you have to squeeze so hard to get the product out, but that doesn't seem to be the case with all of them. So I'm very disappointed with the consistencies of the formula and the packaging on these. And so I, I would not recommend them. So if you are interested in picking up anything from this launch, the only items I'd recommend would be the highlighter and the lip gloss. Those are the only ones I can say are, you know, definitely worth getting. So I hope this was helpful and I am very sorry to have to do this. Um, but you know, I just unfortunately can't recommend this collection at this time. And hopefully, you know, they'll figure out whatever's going on with the consistencies of the blush and the packaging issues and so forth. And they can kind of fix that, repackage them and relaunch these. Because again, I think these colors are beautiful. And when you have the right consistency of it, 
it goes on beautifully. It blends out smoothly and it does look very natural. The other thing I'd like to mention about the blushes is that on some people, they last all day. On me, they do not. They, they do fade. Um, you know, it's, yeah, they fade throughout the day. By the end of the day, I can't really see the blush. Now, I don't know if that is related to the consistency issues though. So it's just something to note. And yeah, so I hope this was helpful. And I would love to know if you picked anything up from this and what your experience or experiences have been with the, these particular items. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And I will see you very soon. So have a great day.